The US government is creating a new task force to investigate UFO sightings. It comes just months after the Pentagon declassified three videos captured by Navy pilots showing unidentified flying objects. It's exciting news for Ryan Sprague, who has spent years interviewing people who've had encounters with UFOs. Earlier today, I spoke to him about what he thinks the task force could uncover. Ryan Sprague, thank you for joining the latest. The fact that the US government created a new UFO task force, does this mean they know more than we think? That's a very good question. Uh, that's what we're hoping for. And the fact that we live in a world now where the US government and hopefully other governments are looking at this topic seriously and investigating it uh, in an official capacity is more than we could ever ask for. So I do believe there are some things that will remain classified, but I think the public is going to be led on to a lot more in the coming, coming months. So what do you think they are hoping to discover with this task force? I think what they're hoping to discover with this is uh, possible threats or incursions. I mean, this is what our government does. They protect their nations, and they want to know if there's things in our skies that our most sophisticated pilots and aircraft uh, are being outmaneuvered by. Uh, that's a problem. So I do think this is a safety issue, a national security issue. And uh, hey, if it turns out to be aliens, uh, all the more better for us UFO researchers out there. But end of the day, I do think this is a, uh, a national security issue more than anything. How has the world's understanding of UFOs changed over the past year? The past few years, the perception of the UFO topic has changed dramatically. You know, for 70 plus years, it was filled with stigma and ridicule and little green men in flying saucers. But now that the governments around the world are taking it seriously, uh, that says something. So the entire landscape of this conversation has changed. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that as time goes on, that something's happening in our skies and we cannot explain it. So let's talk about your latest book. What made you focus on individuals who've had UFO experiences? So for me, uh, you know, the US government and other governments are looking at military UFO cases that military pilots and people on the ground have reported. But for every one of these military UFO encounters, there's a hundred civilians from all over the world who report seeing these things. So I wanted to focus on those individuals, give them a voice, show the world that everyday people are having these experiences, including an entire chapter dedicated to an individual in Sydney, Australia. So, I mean, this is this touches a deeply personal level for people all over the world, and uh, I'm excited to have the opportunity to bring these stories to the public that have never been made public before. How did you find these people? Uh, the age of the internet. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people reached out to me. I reached out to a lot of people. There are civilian UFO research groups all over the world that are connected through Facebook, through Twitter. And we all talk and we all are sharing information. So it, uh, it really depends. But yeah, most of it has to do with social media in the age we live in. So can you see a pattern in people's experiences? I would say the biggest pattern I've come across in terms of people's is, uh, experiences is how the event affected their lives. You know, we could have the same similar shape of an object these people have seen or, uh, you know, a location where it occurred. But for me, it always comes down to the human, the individual having the experience and how it changes their lives. And for some, it's a spiritual experience. For some, uh, it's a otherworldly experience. And that's what I found most interesting, is these patterns within society and culture and how those affect what people are seeing and their perception of what they're seeing. So what sort of percentage of people do you think see an object and think, that's strange, don't know what that is, compared to people who are convinced it's aliens? That's a very good question. I mean, my first question when people come to me with a UFO report is, were you into UFOs before this? Did you believe in aliens and have they visited our planet? And I will tell you, probably the majority of people said no. I had no interest in this. I've never watched anything about UFOs. Uh, so for me, I think the percentage really comes down to individuals 
no preconceived notions of what they were seeing and coming out on the other side believing we're not alone. So skeptics would look at this and think, you know, there's a certain type of person who will believe in a UFO. Did you find that? Is there a certain type of person? No. I mean, when we're talking about UFO witnesses, we all have these ideas of, you know, people in the backwoods having these experiences. They've maybe had a few too many beers, but this is not the case. I've interviewed doctors, law enforcement, news reporters, everyone you can possibly think of, your barista at the coffee shop. These are the people having these experiences and being dramatically changed by them. So you've had a UFO experience? I have. I saw a UFO when I was a child and I was terrified of what I saw. I could not explain it. My father witnessed this with me. He could not explain it. And it terrified me. And it kind of sent me on this path to try to find answers. What do you think it was? I believe what I saw, this was back in the mid 90s, was some sort of top secret military aircraft, but I cannot be certain of that. So the possibility remains open. Was it ours? Maybe. Was it from another planet? Possibly. Uh, and hopefully someday I'll find that answer. But for me, it's more about the journey than I guess the final destination. So are you a believer in you know, something else being out there or you're on the fence? I'm a skeptic believer. I am definitely a skeptic believer when it comes to this topic. Uh, I will go in believing until I'm proven wrong or I'm proven differently. So I remain open. I know there's life out there somewhere. It's a matter of has it visited our planet? And that's what we're trying to figure out. And that's what our governments are trying to figure out. So I look forward to whatever comes next. You said you've looked into UFO cases in Australia. Tell me about the cases in Australia. There are two cases in Australia that I've specifically looked at. One was back in the 70s with a family, the Knowles family, who were traveling through Perth. And they actually, while they were on the road, a UFO came down and landed on the roof of their car and lifted their car off of the road. And every member of the family had the same story to tell. There were, uh, you know, the tires blew out, there was damage to the car, so something happened. And there were other witnesses to this as well. So this is a very dramatic case out of Australia. Uh, the other one happened in uh, the mid-90s in Sydney with a gentleman who's had lifelong UFO experiences. He even invited news reporters and investigators to come out, and all of these people had UFO sightings with him. So talk about changing your life. This guy is being followed by UFOs every waking moment. So it's really interesting. And I will say some of our best cases come out of Australia. And do you believe all the people you talk to? Yes. I believe the individuals believe what they saw. That's, that's as far as I can go in terms of saying that. Sounds like fascinating reading. Thank you so much for your time. Ryan Sprague.